Okay, uh, this first question up here, fusion fission, difference? We good with that? Is there anything else to contrast with them? <coughs> Why not? You can't read it on that. Up there? Why not? <clears throat> There's a lot more energy associated with the fusion than there is the fission. <laughs> I don't know what's... Yeah, you should say, ha 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 ha, take a physics class. The sun is fusion. Nuclear reactors that we use are fission. We're not able to use fusion because it produces so much power. The thing that they, like uh, the device that they use to do the fusion reaction in starts to melt. What, what did we say is the real bad part about nuclear power that we use, the fission type? The waste. What's the waste with fusion? Helium. Helium atoms. There's like, you put it in a kid's balloon, birthday party balloon. But we're not going to be putting fission waste in a kid's balloon unless you don't like that kid very much. So, what's wrong with this article? It's kind of wrong. Okay, yeah, one off. It's telling you that the you get a smaller release in energy. No, that's wrong. How about that right there? Is that a helium atom? No, it's not. I mean, it is because there's two protons there, but two protons and one neutron, that's not um, stable. You need two and two for a helium atom. It needs to be a mass of four, not a mass of three. So we're wrong with this, all this stuff anyway. Um, how about this here? No, it breaks up into two big pieces, big chunks, and what? And three neutrons. It doesn't split the entire nucleus into tiny little pieces. Because if it did, what are those pieces? What are each of these pieces in here? It's either a proton or a what? Okay, well, that right there is not radioactive, right? It's just a neutron. And what would this do if it was a, just free in the atmosphere? It would find another proton and turn into helium. Or sorry, turn into hydrogen gas. Are either of those things radioactive or dangerous? No. So this person seriously not knowing what they're writing about. So I'm reading this in 2005. I mean, I see the article. This is the article that you can't see. So I see this, I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I want to read about that. And then I read it, and I'm like irritated as hell. <laughs> so <clears throat> I just pick up the phone, and I call the University of California, because that's where this graphic was. And I ask, so I'm calling UCLA, and I'm asking for the physics department. There isn't one. They don't have a physics department. They have a science department that they teach physics in, but they don't have a science, they don't have a physics department. I'm like, all right, well, that's fishy. Can I talk to the chair of the science department? And she said, yeah, and I called, they, they transferred me, and um, I told them about the article that it was off the Associated Press. What is the Associated Press? If I'm an independent news uh, journalist, 
and I'm have my credentials have been accepted by the Associated Press, I write an article about something and then I, I send it to the Associated Press. And then if I'm an editor of a newspaper and I want to write something, I want something to be in the paper about horses, then I do a search on the Associated Press for an article about horses and I put an article in about horses. If I want to do one about science and it's something about interesting in science, I'll go to the science category and whatever floats near the top is interesting, I'll pick one of those. So somebody picked this. So this person wrote this article and then they, the editor at the Oregonian pulled it off the Associated Press wire. So it's basically, if our journalists didn't write it, I can just yank it off of the Associated Press. It's a wire service. So I'm talking to this guy and I'm like, hey, uh, did you okay an Associated Press article about nuclear fusion in France? And he says, I don't know anybody who's doing that. And so I told him to look the article up online and he's like, we don't have a physics department here at UCLA. And I'm like, yeah, I just found that out. <laughs> um, and then he's like, wait a second, these graphics are stupid. I'm like, yep, they're stupid. Um, did anybody okay that? And he's like, no way. Nobody in our department whatever would have okayed this. I mean, it's not possible. So check your source. Even if your source seems legitimate, what should you do? What was, what was rule, what was step number two in the scientific method? No, that's step four. Don't get ahead of yourself. You have to have a problem, right? You have to have a problem to answer. And what's part two? What's the next thing you do? This is what I want to learn about. This is what I want to solve. And part two is research. If you're a grad student, master's, or a PhD, or a PhD, you might sit and read, read articles for two years. So if you read this one, what would you do? Laugh, tell somebody about it, and then read the next article because this one's stupid. What? No, I actually called the Associated Press and they're like, no, we won't put you in contact with that person. I'm like, okay, well, do you want to talk to the department chair of physics at UCLA? Because it doesn't exist. And they're like, yeah, we don't care. That's pretty much it. Yeah. And you wonder why people don't like the media. Maybe because you don't care. All right, name these five molecules. What do we got here? What? Yeah, that's why I put this one down, because it's not toluene. Why? There's no circle here, so that's not benzene. That's just what? Methyl cyclohexane. Let's start off with a, many places you could trip over. Okay, next one. What do you definitely not want to write first? Meta, why? Sorry, ortho? Because this is not a benzene ring. It's only five. And it's not aromatic. There's no circle in the middle. So this is one, two, di, well, that's hard. <laughs> You can, it's okay to put the I next to the, the to, it's okay to have a double I or not. It's your option. Because it's three vowels in a row, which is sort of like against most grammar and spelling rules, right? Yeah. You okay with that? Should I change that to a chlorine to make everybody feel better next time? What's wrong with cyclopentane? Okay. So benzene is either that or that. That was like, I don't know when we talked about that last term. Double bonds, hybridization. I think that was last term. 
Um, so this one is 1, 2, dichloro. Nope. We go with that cyclopropane. Alrighty. How about this one? You good with that? Three, four dimethyl. Same. You good with that? Why is it ethyl before methyl? Alphabetical. Okay. All right. How about this next one? Yeah, it's awesome. So you get for having a table. So I've got um, five. Okay. So what do I want to do here? Start on the right hand side. So I'm going to say that this is a pent. You okay with that? And it's a pentene, right? Because there's a double bond, and it's a two pentene. We okay with that? The double bond is located at position two. Got to specify that. Otherwise, it could have been between spot one and two. I read whatever end is closest to the most active side chain, and in this case, that's a double bond. Um, what else we got? I have a chlorine and I have a methyl group, right? So the methyl is on two and the chlorine is on three. So we'll go with three chloro, uh, two methyl dash two pentene. Is that good? Alphabetically superior side chain? Yes. Yep. So bromo would come before methyl, chloro comes before methyl. All right, so I have a double bond here. And so that's position two. So this is a two hexene, we good with that? And then coming off of it, there's a methyl group at three and a methyl group at four. So three comma four di methyl two hexene, is that good? Next one. Fluoroethene. Do I need to say one fluoroethene? I don't really, because whichever carbon it's on, it's going to be number one, so it doesn't really matter. How did I know this was ethene and not ethane? There weren't enough hydrogens if it was just single bonds, so it must have been a double bond. So if I'm looking at this, I'm going to draw two carbons and connect them up to each other, and I know there's a fluorine on one of them, and I've got three hydrogens. So if I try to put all three hydrogens on this first carbon, I'll run out, right? So if I move one of these hydrogens over here and I put a double bond, there we go. I'm good to go. How about the next one? Yeah, why? Why is it not possible? That carbon right there, or let's see, maybe if I do something like, I 
if I just draw something down here. There we go. This carbon right here that you can't see, because this is working out for me. It's got three bonds to the carbon above it, right? And then it's got a bond on the left and it's got a bond on the right. That's five bonds. You can't do that. So this molecule does not exist. Draw this. So, wow, it's amazing. Something like that. Uh, well, what would you do this? When they're super small, it kind of makes it hard to see what's going on. Two, three, yeah, great. Two, three, four, five, six. And then one, two, three, and three to four. There we go. Did you guys hear what I was saying when I was drawing that? When I was counting? I put my pen on the paper and I say one, two, three, four, five, six. As opposed to one, two, three, four, five, six. That end is the first carbon. So when you put your pencil down, if you say one, then you'll be okay. If you don't say one, if you say the line for your first turn is one, that's two carbons. Um, propene, something like that. If you want, you could draw H, C, triple bond C, H. Oh wait, I'm missing something there, sorry, propene. Cool, thanks, Word. Mm -hmm. And we've got Two, three, four, and then the two, three, four, and then a triple bond there, and then a bromine there. So with this one, I wanted to be clear that there's this little hitch thing down here. <coughs> that, if you don't have that, then it looks like the bromine is attached to the third carbon, not the fourth carbon. So draw your four carbons and then draw lines off of your carbons for stuff that you're connecting to. Yeah. There's a toluene. What's attached to my toluene? A brom, what'd you say? Just one bromine, right? And where's that bromine attached? On the opposite side, because we said para. And so now I've got a benzene, and then I've got a car chlorine and a fluorine, so chlorine and a fluorine. Good with that? <laughs> yep. Meta. I could have said meta or could have just put an M. Absolutely. Yep. And in the last one, I could have wrote 1, 4 or, or P. 